727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis, with great deal of pleasure. We have Shane Smolian for the Wolf Trader on the line. Shane, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, we're in business now. Hopefully, we'll get your charts posted. And the question that someone's asked me is, how did you get I know you're a uh, relatively young man. How did you get started in uh, financial astrology at such a young age? Well, my father was involved in commodities his whole life, and he was a commodity trader. And he used to work for uh, a lot of different uh, commodity companies throughout Florida. And so he got me interested in trading and looking at just different markets. And then I'd always been interested in astrology since a young age. And in two, around 2000, 1999, I started looking at the markets. And it wasn't until about right around the meltdown, right around 2008, that I started to look into the link between astrology and the markets. And I started to see, actually, I was looking at um, Raymond Merriman's site. He's another financial astrologer. And he showed this chart showing every time Saturn would go into a cardinal sign, the United States markets would go into trouble. And I said, well, that's, that's interesting because the United States is the sign of cancer. And so every time it would make a hard angle to the United States, the charts would go start going bad. And then I started looking into it and then that's when the Fed started coming in. So everything kind of started coming in together. I started to see some success with the astrology, and then the Fed would come in and kind of kind of level that out. And it was kind of this cat and mouse game back and forth between the astrology and the Fed after that. Wow, that's really interesting. I know you did quite a bit of uh, uh, research on the Fed uh, juice and stuff like that. You want to talk to us about what you have for us? Hey, by the way, thanks for joining us. I know you've been really busier than a one arm paper hanger, but uh, I really appreciate it. And so on is everyone here. So why don't you show us what you're looking at today, and uh, we'll just move on from there. So go right ahead. Sure. Uh, go, if you just want to put up the fresh chart, I don't see the chart there. I, don't uh, see. I, I hope, hopefully, we'll we'll have that. Uh, let me double check. I might be able. To, well, evidently, it's not coming in the way we wanted it, but I think I might be able to do it uh, okay. by gerrymandering it. Uh, yeah, you want that PowerPoint chart? Is that the one that you're looking sure. at? Uh, that would be perfect, yeah. Okay, hopefully if I can get it up now, there, there is, therein lies the rub, my friend. <laughs> oh, here, I think we're going to be okay. Yep, I think we're going to, let's just give me one second here, and sure. I'm going to do view this slideshow uh, from the beginning, and here we go. I think, oh, I can't do it that way. Just a second. Shut the front door. Uh, you know, you know me as well as anybody, my friend, and I have a hard time with the technical part of this, so. We'll take a little break here and we'll be right back and then uh, uh. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. 
Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, uh, we have Shane Smolian on the line. Shane, I got everything ready. We're on uh, slide number two, the five key domains for the market. You want to start there? Sure. So Go right ahead and just tell me five... when to change and I'll, I'll switch it over. Sure. These are the five key domains that I would consider important for timing equities. This is specific equities because this is where the Fed is involved. The first one is the Fed juice. So you got to look at central bank activity. Uh, because it plays such a large role in the direction of specifically equities, I would say secondarily the bond market. And then the next one would be uh, price action, which is tape, tape reading, looking uh, the trending markets. Are they, you know, are they trending? Are they not trending? Uh, and you can look at things such as price pattern with Garley's. And then the next one is time domain, which deals with specific cycles. So we look at specific days of the week that are important for each symbol to trade. Uh, the next one is astrology. So we look at the dominant, dominant feature for equities is the planetary speed index. And so that, re that measures the speed of the planets, and that affects the direction of the markets. The markets tend to go up when the planets are all moving fast together. It tends to fall when the markets are going slow. Uh, then we look at transits, which are the hard aspects and the soft aspects that come together. This is something like the Bradley. Then planetary cycles, which include solar cycles and lunar cycles. And then, of course, finally, we have to have a good optimization, and that means out-of-sample accuracy, which means that the past has to take you into the future. You can't just look at the past and say, wow, what's good in the past. You have to be able to test systematically to see if that works well in the future. Wow. That's great stuff. We'll take a look at the next one now, which is the battle for deflationary and inflationary things. You want to cover that, please? Sure. Okay, so the, there's a battle going on right now in the markets, and it's been going on since 2009 when the Fed began its inflationary policy with the Fed juice. But right now we have a lot of deflationary forces going on in the markets. You have multiple markets deflating. Some of these include silver, oil, copper, coffee, sugar, natural gas, the euro, the S&P, the pound, and grains until recently with their recent rally have been deflating. And we've had this persistent bond rally since March. So all of these are indicating that we have massive deflationary uh, forces going on. However, you have the Fed on the other side creating this opposite force of inflationary. And they have this, what I call the silent QE continues, which I'll go into. Uh, and we are actually at all-time highs. In other words, we're higher than any quantitative easing period. And in the last few weeks, the Fed has just gone skyrockets, and I'll show you on the charts that this all happens before the market turns. And the Fed is so powerful that they can actually turn the downtrend up in two to five weeks. It doesn't take that long. This, it only took them two weeks this time, and 
last time in December, it took them about four to five weeks, some, something in that range. So they have an extremely powerful hand in the markets. And so you've got these two forces going on, and it creates this confusing environment. Wow, that's just amazing. Okay, you want to go to the next one? Sure. Okay, and this was a major uh, timeline for Fed Juice. We'll get this up here so you can take a quick look at it, folks. There you go. By the way, uh, Shane, before you move on, could you tell us your contact number, folks, so the folks could reach you if they'd like to get to you? Sure. You can email me at Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com. Dot com. It used to be wolftrader.net. That's no longer the, the email or the website. So it's shane at wolftraderfutures.com. Okay. And do you have a phone number by, by, by any chance? I do, and I don't want to give that out on the air. Okay. I don't blame you. Go right ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, next slide. Are we on? Okay, major timeline. So. This is really important to understand the broader context of the influence of the Fed on the market. So we, everybody knows about QE1, uh, QE2, Operation Twist, and QE3, but in between there, there has been what I call stress tests, where periods where they, they test the market to see how it will respond without the Fed. So there was one in 2010 where they actually tried to sell off the bond, Bernanke tried to sell, actually tried to sell off the balance sheet and the market started crashing immediately. Then they went through all the QEs and then in 2014 and 2015, they went through a prolonged period of a stress test. It was about a, a little bit over a year. And eventually the markets failed in August of 2015. So then after that point, they started with what I call the silent QE, the silent quantitative easing, and they began this new drive of QE. And I believe what happened was they became more efficient at, and, at their methods in deploying new tools. So it took us beyond previous levels. And then we just had the 2018 stress test, which I'll talk about. And you can clearly see this on the charts. This is not, I mean, this is very clearly outlined with what they did. Wow. I see the chart that you have here uh, is, is really quite interesting. Do you want to cover that one next? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Okay, so the chart here, this is what I call the complete history of the Fed juice since 2009. So you can see, going all the way to the left, that QE1 was the first quantitative easing period. And you can see these spikes in the level of the juice, the way that I measure their data that, that comes into me. Then in 2010, you have that stress test where it pulled back. And then we had a spike in QE2, Operation Twist, and then QE3. And then in 2014 and 2015, we started having this sag in the juice, right? And so the market did keep going up for a while, but then it failed. And then when it failed, it started stammering pretty bad. And, this, and you can see it went up and then it started, it started to have fits. And then eventually in that August period, it failed and failed. So they started this long drive of what I call the silent QE, where we had this big drive of Fed juice coming into the market that nobody saw. In other words, it wasn't it wasn't a formal quantitative easing, but what they were doing was taking the balance sheet and using their tools to deploy the capital. And now they have even more techniques, and I'm looking into trying to integrate that into this Fed juice, but they, they have all these new tools that they use. And so in 2018, when uh, Jerome Powell came in, he started this new stress test. And this, this happened uh, right around March of 2018, and I think he was – doing a stress test. He came in the office. He's like, I want to see what these markets can handle without us constantly juicing. And what happened was it, it worked for a few months. It kept going up, but then it started faltering. And they came in. They had to come in with the reflationary uh, measures again, which we'll, we'll get to uh, in the next slides. Okay. Now, do you want to see the one that says the 2018 stress test? Is that the one you'd like to see? Sure. Sure. Okay. So, this is, so what happened in 2018? I haven't been on... Uh, for about a, over, a little bit over a year, I haven't been on the show. So let's talk about what happened. So the Fed put the market under the stress test to see how it could survive. And so they began, in, like I said, in March of 2018. We made it six months to September 2018. But then we had this period of failure from September to December. So the Fed immediately saw this. This was, this was the big December decline. And it only took them four weeks to turn it higher from, to get a bottom. So it only took four weeks that's the thing we've got to understand here. That's how powerful the Fed can be. Wow. So 
This next slide shows you the 2018 stress test. This is what I call a stress test when they pull back. And the, the, the yellow arrows show that when the Fed use was falling back, the markets immediately oh, fell. Uh, and we then have we to, had this we failure pay period. Uh, Shane, we got to pay a few bills. Stay with us for two minutes, OK? Sure. Thank you. Shane Smolian, Wolf Trader. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, talking with Shane Smolian, WolfTraderFutures.com, and we're talking about that 2018 stress test. Did you want to continue, Shane? Sure. So... Essentially, they tried it again, the market failed again. But the one thing I want to stress is that they're having to put more and more and more energy into the market to keep it up. So th this is one thing that we got to watch. Now, if you look over on the right side where it says reflation under the green arrows, you can see that spike straight up on the right side of the graph. That's the most recent uh, attempt that they made and they succeeded to turn the market back up. So you can see that this is going now to all-time highs again, and it's blowing away any of the other QE periods. Wow. Okay, we'll move so, on to the next one, which is the uh, one on recent inflation and the Fed juice. Sure. So th okay. this shows you the power that they have here. And you can see beforehand, you got these two lines on the graph, these two light blue lines. You can see on the left, the first one says 12-7-2018, and the one on the right says 
524-2019. This is when they turn up the juice, and notice it always happens before the market turns. This is happening beforehand. It only took them about three or four weeks to, to stop it. And then on the, on the, the one on the 24th, it only took them about two weeks to do it this time. Uh, it is very tricky, though, even when you're looking at this in real time, because recently, this week, it did not look like the market was responding. And then all of a sudden, and they were putting in more, putting in more, putting in more, putting in more, and then all of a sudden, it just, it just hit that low, and it, and, it, and it throws everything off, because the rest of the markets are telling the scenario of a decline, of an of an, a deflationary decline. I mean, gold and silver are now finally starting to move into small uptrends. Uh, and you, the bond has been rallying. So you're seeing these, this story being told with everything else, but the ES does its own thing because the Fed is coming in and controlling this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, the next slide, you talk about the real money in the Fed. Do you want to go into what you mean by that? Yeah, so what is the, what is the, mark, uh, what is the market in, in real money, you should say, in real money? Uh, so what I try to do is just to get an idea of what's going on. I try to price the S&P in terms of the Fed. In other words, what would – what would it be, you know, on its own if it didn't have the Fed? So it measures the relative gains in terms of the Fed stimulus. So when it's rising, it means that the market is, is outpacing the Fed. It's actually doing it on its own. When it's falling, that means that the Fed is essentially controlling it. It's hard to pinpoint okay. an exact true dollar figure, but the absolute mm -hmm. levels are still below March of 2009. So mm -hmm. that might sound shocking to people that the S&P – true value would be in the 600s or something. But you don't have to worry, because the good news is that the Fed will continue to support the market. The Fed is not going anywhere. They're going to continue this accommodative stance towards markets. But if you looked at it in terms of the actual true value based upon the Fed juice, if you price it in terms of Fed juice, we're still below the March 2009 levels. Wow. So I, I don't this want to confuse people. I'm not telling you it's going to go there, but I'm telling you that that's what it would be in based on this chart if the Fed wasn't intervening. So this is the chart here showing the real dollar values. And you can see that on this latest decline, when the Fed juice started ramping up, that if you price it in terms of the Fed juice, the market's actually falling. You see that? In other words, that means that the market did not do this on its own. It was not the market that rallied. It was the Fed. And so when it has these periods where it's above the average, that means the market is outpacing the Fed. In other words, when it's above the average, the market can go up when the Fed is pulling back. But when it's below the average, the market has a hard time going up, much like someone trying to do a pull-up. If you help them do the pull-up, that's kind of what the Fed is doing. It's coming in and helping out the market. And then uh, you see that big bump up in the last couple of weeks. That's what the, the Fed is doing right now. So they know that the, the economies are slowing. They know that the jobs numbers are bad. They know that an interest rate might be high or cut might be coming. So they're, they're coming in ahead of time to bring support to the markets. Wow. This next chart is the Fed forces versus natural forces. This is really amazing. I, I tell you, I haven't seen one this uh, sophisticated in a long time. You want to tell the folks what you're looking at here? Sure. So this is a chart. This is a chart that we post on our service on Twitter. This is the S&P. So I post a bunch of different graphs. The top two graphs is the original Fed use that I posted back in 2016. I keep that up because it had performed so well. And the one below it is an optimized version. So these are the Fed forces. This is what's pushing the market up. So you have the Fed, and it actually pushed into an uptrend in just three days. We were in a downtrend, and in three days, they pushed it to an uptrend. It's so powerful. So that's what I call the Fed forces. So this is the tug of war. This is the upward forces on the market. And so that dot above the average on the, the Fed juice means it's just moving up. And then the outlier trend trader, that's a, a, a uh, indicator that we use to identify when that market is trending. So now we're in an uptrend. It's just like that. They took us out of the wow. downtrend to the uptrend. It's so powerful. And, and, it, and again, it was very tricky because it looked like it was ignoring the Fed. And then all of a sudden, boom, there it came. I could see wow. the money, the flows coming in, but I wasn't even able to find that, that low. I wasn't able to find it. I, and it fooled me. I thought we were, we were headed lower. And then I could see the flows coming in and looked on the price action like it was going down, but you could see by the just tremendous inflows that eventually they were able mm -hmm. to overcome the markets. Well, this next slide, folks, is about the cycles that uh, he looks at for astro charts. I think you got all of those for me, didn't you, pal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, well, this is really incredible. Below it that says the there's natural only, forces. There's only 15 of them? There's one right there that says natural. There was one slide right below 
uh -huh. the, the up forces that says the down forces. Wow, this is really, hey, oh, I, I, let me get that one in. I'm sorry, I missed that one. Okay. I was so, no I was, I was so intense at looking at that that I, I, I missed that one. Go right here, there it is right now. Okay, so I know they look, very, it looks very similar to the last chart. But the difference here is I want to point out this out to you. This is the day, I have, the first one here is, uh, the, is the day of the week indicator. That shows us how the market tends to behave on each day of the week. That's a time cycle. Then you look down, you have the planetary speed index and the solar cycle. These are astrology-based cycles, so these are what I call the natural forces. The natural forces are actually down right now. The market should be in a down profile right now. So you've got this tug of war going on, and it creates this really confusing environment because it looks like things are supposed to be going down, and then, boom, here, here they come. So it, it, it creates a disruptive environment, but the, the, the thing to consider is that everything around these markets are pointing to the deflationary scenario. Wow, that's truly amazing. Now, can we talk about these uh, key astro cycles that you're looking sure. at? Sure, sure. Wow, this is really incredible. Fifteen of these, folks. Go ahead, fire away, my friend. Sure. So this is this is what I put out. I put this out on Excel, and I give everybody a, a, an Excel spreadsheet with different tabs, and we look at all these different cycles. So this is the information that I give to the subscribers. So we have essentially a solar and a lunar cycle for silver for gold, for oil, the S&P. Uh, and then the S&P is a more complicated animal because we know that now we've got to deal with the Fed. We can't just use astrology on the S&P because we have these outside influences, and I outlined that in the beginning. So we have the solar and the lunar cycle, which are, you know, the solar cycle is a larger term picture, which is always good. The lunar cycle has been really chaotic lately, so we've got to look at the planetary speed index, which is really important. That's the dominant astrology-based indicator then we can look at something like the Bradley and then general combined transits, which are transits like the Bradley but more, more, more specific. Then we have the Euro solar and lunar and then the 10-year bond solar and lunar. So these are the charts that I give out to the subscribers on the Twitter service. Okay. All right, we'll take a break here. We'll be right back with Shane Smolian, <laughs> WolfTraderFutures.com. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, 
or SPXS, Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Shane Smolian. And what we're looking at here, I believe, is a planetary index chart. You want to tell the folks what this is, my friend? Yes, so this is the planetary oh, speed uh, index, and this is an astrology-based chart. Now, this is interesting because this is based on the speed of the planet. It has nothing to do with what sign they're in, the aspects that they're making, whether it's direct, retrograde. It's just how fast the planets are moving. And as a broad-based indicator, it tends to be a dominant feature in markets. And I do want to just point something out to people that we, we cannot just focus on any one area and say that's the end-all, be-all. We cannot just focus on the Fed and say that's everything. We cannot just focus on price patterns and say that's everything. We cannot just focus on astrology and say that's everything. We have to be flexible and adaptable. So this is why I look at the broad picture, okay? But as a general rule, the markets do follow the speed index, and every major crash has been on the declining speed index. There's no exception. If you look back to 1987, you look back to 2003, 2000, you look back to the flash crash, I mean, you go 2008, they're all declining on these falling speed indexes. So, yes, it's, it, it affects the, the markets because the markets are people, and people have moods. And so it's a mass psychology. So on, on this cycle, I have them labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and it shows these, these general peaks and troughs, and it's not always exact. But the general feature is that once the speed starts declining as a whole, the markets tend to roll down unless you have such, you know, a super, super, super strong Fed influence. But we know that the Fed stopped or pulled back on that stress test, so now the astrology becomes a, a front picture now, okay? So when the Fed is pulling back, the astrology becomes the dominant issue. So notice when he went from, on the right side, when he went from G up to H, that even in the last few days, the market still did shoot up to that peak. So even though you did have the help of the Fed, it, it did shoot up to that peak. Now we're coming into this declining period, and it will be really interesting to see what happens because we have these falling uh, speed index all the way down into uh, the third week of July, about July the 20th. And then that last peak there, J, down to K, that's right around the 4th of July. So I think that's going to be an interesting time to watch. If we have a declining market into that period, we really have to be careful because those are the times that we can get severe dislocations. Uh, and so we got to watch it. And so also depends upon the, the Fed juice that we measure. If the Fed juice starts to fall during that period also, then we can get these dislocations in the market. The next chart we're talking about is the upcoming Mercury retrograde in Leo. Uh, Leo is in July, isn't it? That uh, That's usually when that happens? Yes. Uh, so what happens is when Mercury goes retrograde, Mercury, from our vantage point, it's, it's, it's oscillating back and forth across the sun from their geocentric standpoint. So Mercury can get ahead of the sun. So even though the sun is in cancer, Mercury gets far ahead, and then the sun's like, hey, come back here. You're too far ahead. And so everything revolves around the sun. Leo is the sun. The planets revolve around the sun. So anyway, so what happens is that uh, we actually enter the shadow period, which is when Mercury starts to go slow around uh, June the 12th. So then – we start to have this slowdown in Mercury. Now, the retrograde happens on July the 7th, and then it all, that's a station, and then it hits the midpoint on the 19th of uh, July, and then it goes direct on the 7th, of the 31st of July. Now, the interest, lot, there's a lot of important things to take in here. First of all, any time we have a slow Mercury, markets are susceptible of falling. Okay? They don't always fall on a slow Mercury, but when we have big downtrends or big, huge, fast moves, happens when we have a slow mercury and it always happens within about 
three days of that retrograde period. It's, it's like without exception. It's just very strange. If you go back and look at all these dislocations, they're all within that period. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it means if it's going to happen, it's right around this period. The midpoint tends to be where we have reversals and trends. So, and this has to... This has to do with the acceleration vector because Mer that's the midpoint. So the acceleration vector of Mercury changes from slowing down to speeding up. So when that acceleration vector changes at that point, at that midpoint, we tend to have these reversals. And that just so happens to coincide with uh, planetary speed index. And then we also have other cycles coming in. So if we get a decline, if the Fed, if Fed use is falling and we get that perfect setup, that's when we would be looking for a low at markets. Wow, that's really, boy, you certainly do a lot of work, my friend. The next one we're going Thank to look at is the Mercury Station retrograde. I think that's similar to what you were just chatting about, wasn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is, so there's two times the Mercury's in the station. It's going either retrograde or it's going direct. Interesting chart here. I just thought this is not a, this is not a friendly chart. Uh, this is when the, the Mercury is going into that retrograde period. You have the sun conjunct the node, which is connections, people, and places. Uh, opposite of Saturn and Pluto. Saturn and Pluto are making this conjunction right now. And so you have this opposition going on. And now also we have at the same degree, we have Jupiter and we have Neptune. So when you have Saturn and Neptune together in, a, in an aspect, and I, I'm going to connect them because they're by degree. I'm a Uranian astrologer, so we look at degrees that are very important to us. That's We would call this the 12th harmonic. But when you have that connection there like that, that is that that is not necessarily a friendly connection for markets. We always we, we tend to see Neptune a lot in the picture when we have dissolving markets or dissolving boundaries. So this is just something to pay attention to. The picture is not necessarily friendly on that Mercury station. So we got to watch the markets around that time because I think this is an important time to watch. Wow. The next one is the Mercury station uh, in Cancer. Is that? Uh... Another factor sure, this that is when it's going at. direct, and by the way, this is all uh, uh, AIR software. This is Alfie Lavoie. All these beautiful charts are coming from uh, AIR software, Alfie Lavoie. You can look them up on uh, AIR, Alfie.com, A-L-P-H-E-E.com, Alfie Lavoie, okay. uh, AIR software. Okay. So this, uh, this is uh, the chart of when it's going direct, and so it looks a little friendlier because you have, first of all, it's a new moon, okay, which is an important date, but you have the moon with the sun and Venus which is generally, that's, I would say that's generally a friendly chart, Venus being money, uh, a lot of times market. But it make, they're making hard angles to Uranus at that point, at six degrees. So that's something to watch there because Uranus is unexpected events, okay? So this is unexpected events. Uh, the first wow. one would look more of like a military, something, a military confrontation or, or, or an argument or, or war. This one is something just comes out of the blue. So we got to watch that one. And then also we got the two Venus and the moon on either side of the sun. So that suggests those are two female planets, so we would say involving two women, if we had to look at this chart, I would say. So <laughs> just, just throwing it out there, that, that's just, these, these pictures are, you know, this is really zooming down into the details of it. But you know, these aren't the friendliest pictures for this upcoming retrograde. Listen, let's take a quick look at this lunar cycle, and then I want you to sure. spend the last three minutes about how, uh, then it, give the name of your website again, if you would, Shane, and then I want to spend the I last just have, minute. Right now, I just have the email. You can contact me by email. It's shane at wolftraderfutures.com. Go okay. ahead and just send me an email if you're interested in the service, and okay. I can send you out some information about it, explain to you, and I'm actually working on a manual to help people navigate through the service. Well, that's really good. Uh, what we're going to do here, the, the, the beeper is going to come on for paying a few bills, sure. but take this sure. lunar cycle, what we're looking at here, this looks like it's been pretty accurate. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the, the S&P, so this is, again, this is zooming down. The lunar cycles have been a little nutty lately with all of the China news, but mm -hmm. we do see a low coming in around the 17th of July. So, again, you're seeing multiple, uh, you're seeing multiple cycles line up around that period in the third week of July. Okay, let's take a break here. We'll be back with uh, wolftrader.com. Mr. Uh, Shane Smolian will be right with wolftradefutures.com.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page page of tfnn.com and sign up today this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com okay shane uh, you're getting a lot of accolades here for the work you did here today and the last one i'm showing you here you. is the black uh a wolf trader futures uh i know you're in the process of getting all this stuff together you want to tell the folks uh, a little bit about what you're going to be offering and how they can contact you i mean this has been truly amazing to me my friend i've known you a long time and Thank i know you. you do a lot of work but this was uh way above uh what i was expecting so thank you very much uh so why don't you continue on well each day i, I post i just this is essentially a chance to follow what i'm doing on a daily basis and so at the, at each day after I, get all, I gather all the Fed data, I post uh, signals, trading signals for each symbol like this. So it could be silver, gold, oil, S&P, euro, or the 10-year. Uh, and I post long or short. You can see there on the chart, today we were long gold and silver and the euro. We covered that right at 8.30 after the jobs report. So that position covered out. And then on the right side, these are the signals. And I put up there, you know, the, the day of the week trader, the, the outlier trend trader, solar cycle, planetary speed index. So I kind of give a little grid, and then there's also individual charts posted for each symbol. And this gets posted every day. Uh, and again, it's, this is just to follow what I'm doing. If people want to follow what I'm doing on a daily basis, that's what the service is. And I, I send out those charts, those, those 15 different charts. So, you know, some people just want to do their own thing and, you know, go off, or some people want to look at these signals, or some people want to look at just the planetary speed index, or some people want to just look at the lunar cycle. I don't really know uh, what that specific strategy is for each person, but I just kind of say, this is what I'm doing. 
if you guys want to follow along, and I gave a status there on the Fed Juice every day, so you can keep a track of keep track of what's going on. Well, that's just absolutely uh, incredible, actually. Uh, what I'd like to do is if you, if maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, if you could maybe uh, come on for a spot like you usually do, and we could, uh, you know, talk about uh, some of the things that you're seeing in the market. And by the way, anytime you'd like to come on, and I know it's difficult because you're very busy, but we would love to have you here. We missed you while you were gone, so hopefully you'll be back to remember us here because uh, this was really uh, – I don't know how you do it, my friend. I mean, you must not sleep like I do. So thanks for joining us, my friend. Thank you, James Mullion, WolfTraderFutures.com. Sure.